Good morning. What a beautiful day. Thanks for coming to church. It's so nice to have all of you here with us and welcome. I'd like to offer a special welcome to Grace Pantia, who is our musician and accompanist today. We welcome you and thank you for joining us. Absolutely. It's amazing how much music she makes knowing that she only has two hands. It's, you'll see, it's wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. Um, a reminder, we have our Cornhole uh, Board raffle tickets still for sale that support our 150th anniversary celebration. It's one ticket for $20 and six for 100. Uh, the winner will be chosen on May 23rd. Uh, well, a reminder that we have our new Director of Youth and Family Ministry starting. Her name is Linda Cochran, and she will be starting the week of April 19th, so a week from tomorrow. We're very excited to have her join us as we look to the future to help support the faith lives of our youth and our families, and we're excited to have her join us. Another reminder for those who want to compete in our first annual Winter Light Delight Touring Competition. Now, I know that it's April and it seems weird to start talking about something in December, but if you're going to compete, you need time to plan. So, we have four categories if you're going to compete. Clark Griswold, which means you can pretty much see the lights from space. Traditional, Santa's workshop and gathered around the nativity. Um, so start your planning, and if you want to decorate but not compete, that's okay too. But in December, we'll have a drive tour of all the places you can go and check them out, and a period for voting. So yeah, all kinds of fun stuff, and hey, it's just a few months away, so you might as well start now, so it's good. Uh, let's see, I will be away on vacation starting tomorrow, and I will return to the office on the 19th. Dave Hudson, our licensed lay minister, will be covering worship service next Saturday evening. Also, he will be covering for emergencies in my absence. And Connor McKenzie will be preaching and leading worship on Sunday. So we're excited and thankful that he can do that for us as well. Ah, do we have anyone who has birthdays or anniversaries this April? Because if so, oh boy, they are ratting you out. <laughs> well, we invite you to stand so that we can give you a round of applause for your birthday and your anniversary, another trip around the sun. <laughs> We've got some up in the balcony too, it's good. So happy birthday and anniversary. Ah, okay, next slide. This is the one I'm really excited about. We have uh, our youth receiving their first communion today. We have Paul, Lucy, Eric, and Natalie, and we thank you for coming. We celebrate with them their first communion, and we're glad that they have the family and friends support um, as they do that as well. It's definitely an exciting, exciting day. And you know what? I normally wouldn't have us applause, but it's a day to be happy, so let's just do it. <laughs> All righty. So now we're going to share the piece using sign language and no contact. And we do that by putting our hands together in like a, a twisty X marked type thing and you do a spin move with your hand. So it's peace. And you can go either way with that, it doesn't matter, peace. And then you drop your hands down. And the, the width is you bring your knuckles together and your thumbs forward. So it's be with. I'll do that one more time. Be with you. And the response, you get to hang 10 and also with you. So I invite you to please share that piece with one another. And if you can't remember, just do the hang 10 and you're good. <laughs> up in the balcony, they're piecing with, they're piecing with you up there too. <laughs> We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first reading this day is from the fourth chapter of Acts, beginning with the 32nd verse. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the first chapter of the first book of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as you are able. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel according to the 20th chapter of St. John, beginning with the 19th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. According to the movie character Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. I imagine that life moved pretty quickly for Jesus, for Mary and the disciples, for Jesus' loved ones, his followers, for Pontius Pilate. For everyone in Jerusalem that had some, some peace or who, who witnessed the events that happened around Jesus' arrest, his trial, his crucifixion, his burial, and finding the empty tomb. It's a lot for anyone to take in and process. And surely if you've ever lost someone to death, it seems the world is in fast forward while your emotions are in slow motion and it's a lot to take in and get a handle of. Now Thomas, he wasn't in that locked room with the frightened disciples. He wasn't there that first time that Jesus appeared and stood with them. Thomas missed out on that encounter. And since he wasn't there, he missed out on seeing Jesus, the wounds, when he showed them to the disciples, even though the disciples didn't need to see them. They didn't ask for it. Jesus just showed them. Thomas wasn't there to hear Jesus' words, peace be with you, in the midst of the disciples' fear in that room. Thomas missed out. And if it wasn't for those disciples telling Thomas about what had happened with Jesus, how would he have known about anything happening at all? You see, unlike those disciples, Thomas was somewhere else when Jesus appeared. Perhaps Thomas wasn't afraid like the others, so he didn't feel that he had to hide in that room, locked away behind those closed doors. Or maybe life moving fast for Thomas was important because he was busy out in the community, running from his feelings and keeping busy because it was just too much to figure out. But whatever it was, Thomas didn't stop to look around, and perhaps his busyness is what kept him from seeing the risen Christ that first time. Now, most of us know that for years, if you think about Thomas, we put that word doubting right in front of his name, doubting Thomas. And he's got a reputation that precedes him giving that name, and it kind of has a stigma tied to it that Thomas is somehow less faithful than the other disciples because he questions. All because Thomas said, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of his side, I will not believe. I honor his honesty. But you see, Thomas, he just wanted to experience the risen Christ like the disciples in that locked room did in a much more tangible, touchable way. Remember, Jesus in that room, he wished the disciples peace showed them his hands and his side on his own. Thomas needed more, and he knew that. He needed it in order to believe. I think Thomas is a lot like us. We, like him, missed out on being in that locked room when the, with the disciples when Jesus stood there and talked with them. And we only have the accounts of the risen Christ first shared by the disciples to learn from and listen to. And we can choose to believe their story. In fact, that's what we do because we weren't there to see it in person. Or we can choose not to. Or maybe we want to and it's really hard. Maybe we're somewhere in between believing and doubting and trying to imagine how something so miraculous can happen. Ferris Bueller tells us that life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. 
It seems not that long ago that we were on the eve of Ash Wednesday, looking into the season of Lent and all of the events that would take place that we would remember during Holy Week and Easter, which was just a week ago. It seemed like that was a far, far long time looking ahead on Ash Wednesday, but in fact it went really fast, and every year I'm surprised how fast it goes. Life moves pretty fast. We're in the second week of Easter already. I don't know where time goes. And it's mind-boggling, really, if, if you try to logic out and understand the facts that led to Christ's death and his resurrection, why he would have to die for our sake. And it's really more difficult to make sense of how it all, all works out for the benefit of humanity, for those who've gone before us, for us now, and those in the future. All of God's creation, this happened for us. And although we're told about or read about the events centuries after they happened, we stand outside of that upper room. We have our faith in Jesus Christ and his resurrection we have faith that we're saved, forgiven, and loved unconditionally by Jesus who wants peace for us. My hope for our First Communion folks today, especially the kids, but for all of us as we commune, is to know that in those times when our faith is something we struggle with, to know that that's okay and it's a part of being Christian, because in that questioning, we have the opportunity to dig deeper for more answers. And it's a scary feeling when you question your faith. It really is, and we don't know what to do with it. But the thing is, in that scariness and in that questioning, that's when our hearts and our minds are open to Jesus and his teachings to experience the witness of the disciples who experienced Jesus that first time in that locked room. And to Thomas, who showed up a week later when life was moving too fast, and he stopped and had a chance to look around. You see, that week later, Thomas was there when Jesus returned. Jesus gave Thomas what he needed to help his unbelief. Even though when Thomas said what he needed, Jesus wasn't in that room, but Jesus knew. He knows for us, too. Jesus took away Thomas's doubt and replaced it with astonishing belief, so much so that when Thomas encountered Jesus, he cries out, my Lord and my God. And then comes the part. Then comes the part where Jesus includes us in the gospel story, even though we are not in that same room. In verse 29, Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not yet seen, those who have not yet seen us, blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have come to believe. And we're also told that the signs in the gospel are written so that we may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing we may have life in his name. We have life in Jesus' name, and that's exciting. Even though we're not in that upper room, locked away, we too have life in his name. And it's important for us to know that like Thomas Sometimes in our disbelief, our questioning and doubt leads to that greater understanding of Jesus and therefore a deeper faith life and a relationship with him. We all know that life goes really, really fast. Really fast. And it takes our focus elsewhere and we miss it. We can be more like Thomas. We can ask questions. We can state what we need to Jesus, knowing and having faith that he will answer us in his time and give us what we need. Just because we're outside of that room where Jesus appeared, it doesn't make Jesus any less of our God and Lord too. First John even brings it in. We're told we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. 
We're the you also people having fellowship with the disciples. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And if that's the case, which it is, since they're in fellowship with Jesus Christ, so are we. We're not left out. And through believing, we have life in Jesus' name and life outside of that room as believers, out in the world, centuries later, that grace-filled gift from the risen Christ to us all, life in His name. We're not left out. Amen. In this morning's prayers, we certainly would like to lift uh, and celebrate those, our youth, that are making their first communion. But we also need to lift those that continue to need our Lord's healing grace. And those include those that are up on your worship screen, Robert, Ralph, Carmelo, Lisa, Bob, Trudy, Sally, Jim, Craig, and Lori. And at this time, I'd like the congregation to lift those that they would like announced in today's prayers. Pat. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation, restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war and mass shooting violence. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Provide your healing touch and lift all of those named aloud this day whom we hold close in our hearts. Hear us, O God. You give us fellowship with one another in St. John Lutheran Church. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. We give thanks that Paul, Natalie, Eric, and Lucy receive their first communion on this day. Strengthen them with your gifts of grace to love and serve as your young disciples. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that empowers us as a faith community. Hear us, O oh God. You share the gift of eternal life in thanksgiving and remembrance. We recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God. 
in the hope of the new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. The banquet is ready. You can come and take your place at the Holy Feast. For communion today, we will start with the folks over on the far side of the church here. I invite you to come up through the side aisle. Um, keep your mask on until you get to the table, and you can choose either bread or a gluten-free wafer. The bread is in the plain container. The gluten-free have a G and an F on the cover. You can take your mask down and eat the element. Um, put the uh, container in the basket, and then mask up, slide over to the table that has the wine or grape juice. The wine is purple, the grape juice is white. Um, you can receive that element, mask up, and then we have hand sanitizer just to the other side, and you can go back up through the side aisle here, and we'll work our way over for each section. Thank you.
Before you stand up, I just um, want to go off script for a moment. There's something so exciting about seeing the look in someone's eyes when they receive communion for the first time. And it's awesome that we get to spend this day together with our young folks. So thank you for supporting them in their faith lives. We really appreciate it. Now let's pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.